last couple of weeks, we have been doing some possibility thinking about ways that we can be involved in uh, how do we get started in being more missional. And we spent some time last week prioritizing. And if you'll look at the sheet that I have on the table in front of you, and I'd like for everybody to have one of those. If you don't, please raise your hand because we've got some on the other tables that we can pass around to make sure everybody has one. Does anybody not have a sheet? Okay. What, we, what I did uh, on the left-hand side, one group, one of our tables, uh, prioritized the actual categories. And that's the numbers you see out to the extreme left. And they had safety as number one, life skills second, children's entertainment and learning third, teen activities fourth, comfort and care fifth, and community service events as sixth. Obviously, not everybody agrees with all the way things are prioritized, uh, so we were trying to take the top ones. The next column there is what the, prior, the numbers show, how many times somebody put down uh, something as a, one of those line items as a number one or a number two or a number three. And so then we put those uh, into order and reordered them. The plus FT there are ones where several people said, well, if we're gonna do this event, we could do the food truck event at the same time and support, they would support each other. And so that's where you see that uh, plus FT, just to be aware that uh, there are a number of these things that we could put on where there are outdoor activities in the parking lot, where we can bring a bunch of food trucks in, we've uh, enhanced the experience for everybody and continue to build awareness of Northside in the community and the kind of things we're doing to serve the community and to serve people's needs are in the community around us. Now if we'll turn over to the other side, you can see how we took those and put them in a priority sequence. And today what we want to talk about is what are some of the things, the tasks that need to be done to get started doing some of these ministries. Because that's what the whole premise of this class is about, is to go from needing to be missional, and the, the great work that David and, and other leaders here at Northside have done in building the scriptural background for why we need to be missional as a church, as a congregation, where all of us need to be involved in mission work in some, at some level. And the next step then is, well, okay, how do we get started? And so that's what we've talked about this whole time. And we're on week 10 right now, so you've been hearing this for quite a while, but uh, it's something that we need to keep focusing on because as we draw to a close here at the end of August, we're gonna be trying to, to look at what are the concrete steps that we can actually start doing and how do we go about doing those to start making some things happen that we have not been doing in the past. So. The, the value of what we're going, what we've been doing in the last three or four weeks and today is to create a model that other people can use, that we can use in going forward and to have documented the kinds of steps that would be necessary to begin to uh, do things in a mission area and an outreach area in our local community. The, this model is something that businesses do all the time. They've got standard operating procedures, they've got policies, they've got how do you do things, they've got training materials and aids that draw from those so that when someone new comes in, they can look at that and they can give them a guidebook that says, okay, here's how you do your job. This is the things that you're going to need to know. These are the things you're going to need to accomplish in order to get your job accomplished. And that's what we're looking at doing too. So that's a byproduct, an outgrowth of what we're doing. And I wanted to share that with you because we're creating a lot of value here uh, for Northside and even others. Um, I have a good friend who's a former member here and a former elder at the Vancouver Church in Washington. And when I was telling him about this, he said, oh, Alan, he said, when you get done, you need to send me all that material because we want to use it at Vancouver. And that, that was a wake-up call. I had not thought about it from that perspective. 
But everything that we're doing here and the value that y'all are contributing is creating things that we can then use to help uh, future generations, not only ourselves right now, but future generations that follow behind us here at Northside and other places as well. Um, and so toward that end, I was trying to go from the simplest place to start and build there and then build on it step by step. And not coincidentally, we had a pretty good model. And that came, if you notice on the sheet, that the first one, and one of the ones that a number of people uh, put down as a priority was under the safety, was the active shooter response training, personal safety and self-defense classes, and CPR and stop the bleed. And the interesting thing about these is, they kind of automatically have created a hierarchy for us to use to plan where we start with the basics and we do building blocks to add on to it. The reason for that is if we look at the uh, active shooter response training, two things. We would have worked with Bear County Sheriff's Office and they put that training on at churches all over town and other venues, but lots of churches. When you see their uh, promotional points on Nextdoor and other uh, community apps, um, that's what you find, is that they're, they're meeting all over town, and so we provide a venue for them to come. Well, number one, they provide the training. We don't have to do that. Secondly, they provide the advertising and promotion. And so it doesn't cost us anything, and it goes to places that we would never even be able to get or it would cost us a lot of money to be able to promote those. Um, these are called public service announcements, and of course any government agency can do those, but in, in working with any kind of charitable organization, schools, and things like that, uh, all of the media are required under FCC regulations to provide certain amount of time on airtime on radio and TV and print areas in uh, uh, print newspapers and things like that for public service announcements of events and things that those entities, those organizations are doing. And we would qualify for being able to do that. So, Bear County Sheriff's Office can come in and they can accomplish, can I hit two birds with one stone? And that simplifies what we need to do in order to invite them in, provide North Side as a venue, and put the event on. But there's still a lot of work involved. And so we want to start there. The next step would be, uh, we look at um, CPR and Stop the Bleed courses, and we have people here at Northside who uh, probably, I, I'm pretty sure we do, who can teach that. And uh, some who have taught it and may need to update certifications with Red Cross. And then in addition to that, Red Cross and other organizations like that provide uh, teaching materials and training materials to put on courses like that. And so that relieves us and lowers the amount of work that we've got to do in order to put an event on like that. Now that's gonna be an internal north side event. So we would be responsible for all of the promotion to the local community to let people know we're gonna have this class available here at our north side campus on X date and time. The, the next one uh, gets down to personal safety and uh, uh, Self-defense, you, you may or may not need to put those two together. Uh, they can be two separate things easily. But that's one where we're going to have to create or find the course material, and we're going to have to promote it and advertise it. So as you can see, we go down a hierarchy, and as we build the steps that are necessary for the first one, then we get to the next one, and we add on a few more steps that we've then got to be responsible for, and you get to the third one, and there's a few more steps. When we get done with that, we create a, a model and a pattern that can then be a guide for other events that we're going to put on. Because a lot of the things, when it comes to the promotion, when it comes to organizing, when it comes to calendar and, and scheduling, those are going to need to be done for any of them. And so there's a lot of crossover between them. So that's the basic concept that we wanted to work on today. And so. What I wanted you to do, and, and, and what we've got here is, uh, when you're looking at that on, this, on the back side of this, uh, page number two, on the back side, where we've got the, the priorities here on the things that have the 
highest number of ones and twos. And I think there was a three thrown in there somewhere, yes. We start with those, but then we can have and gather information from y'all where we need to input on, okay, what are the tasks that are going to need to be accomplished in order to do this? And I would ask two things. I'm going to put them as y'all tell me what tasks you can think of that need to be accomplished to put on the uh, active shooter response training and conduct that event. And then also, please write them on your sheet. If you need a pen, there should be pens on the tables because I want to collect those afterwards. This is a valuable resource because we may or may not get everybody to get their idea or their input up on the board. And I want to be able to be sure that y'all can write them down and then I'll collect them in the, afterwards so you can please leave them on the table. And so uh, what's one of the first things that we would need to do in order to uh, conduct this class? And I'm going to take these off for right now so we've got some room. Can everybody see this board from where you're sitting? I guess that's an, that's an affirmative. Um, what's, what's something we're going to have to do to put on an event like this? Lead person. Pardon? Lead person. Or percentage. Can you explain that, Jim? That would be the one that facilitates, promotes, uh, helps to organize. Uh, okay. They're the point person, you know, that, that sort of uh, is the front person. I don't okay. Know what else to say. All right. What else? Jolene? That person could have a committee. Committee? <laughs> Take on. Of the church calendar. Can you expand on that? Well, we've got to have it, think about it. If we have to have it far enough out where the sheriff's department will have time to advertise it. Okay. And so we need to work it in. It's going to be in the building, so we have to put it on the calendar so that we reserve a room. So somebody's, somebody's going to need, what I'm hearing is somebody's going to need to coordinate with whoever manages the calendar here at Northside, okay? Uh, is it fair to say that some we would be the same person or maybe somebody else who would uh, coordinate with Bear County Sheriff's Office? The lead person, the lead person for the committee, yeah. Okay. What else? I just need to find out who all, like she said, just who all is involved in all the pieces. So that, you know, all the pieces that you're going to need to do this. So that you can have that lead time and communicate with everybody and get it on the calendar, everybody's calendar. And I think we can do some of our, I know that it's going to be advertised by the Bear County Sheriff's, but do our own advertisement. You know, we've got the uh, missional marketing company that will do that as part of our yes. We're, we Yes, we have a regular budget for doing Facebook and uh, Instagram ads, which we have been using for about nine months now, ten months. So we would want to do that as well. I'm sorry for talking. <laughs> um, I think we need to have start thinking about having some big stand up tall posters. I know they don't want anything on the wall, and those are expensive. But you know the colorful posters you stand around one at each entrance. You know things that are coming up for visibility. I've seen things on like the glass and in the ladies' restroom. There's been different ways that yeah. Yeah. events have been yeah. promoted. See, that's the kind of thing that a number of these that we're saying all would apply to almost any effort we're going to put on. Um, let me catch up. Okay. 
Okay. Jim? Um, let me, you've done, you've done several. Let me get over here. I think it, uh, it's fair with what you were saying earlier, being able to provide uh, the folks in Vancouver, is to give them materials and, and the expectations that we need, uh, like lessons learned and uh, continuity. So that next year, you know, we put this on annually, or or to give shared materials with other churches or whomever. It needs to be scheduled. We can't just it's like we're doing this. It's got to be scheduled to be off the schedule. Yes, sir. And I think you said it in terms of the documentation. You need to include an evaluation component. This is what we did, but how did it go? Who else? Jim? Okay, uh, physical requirements required. Even if uh, this particular promotion uh, is, <coughs> has things that are prepared for and brought by the, uh, that entity, there still will be physical requirements needed, you know, AV, uh, filming, uh, any uh, props, to facilitate that, um, uh, seating, uh, whatever, you know, mats, uh, whatever's required. Okay. At the heart of all this, I have a question. Um, who's going to do all this? That's what the team is for. Team? Okay. How do we get the team? That's what Joe. Jolene was talking about the committee. Okay. How do we get the committee? You've got to want to do it. We have to advertise and talk to each other and commit each other into that. Is recruit a good word? That's a good word. word. Yes. There you go. And obviously these are not priority order because this is one of the first things that's going to have to happen, right? Mm -hmm. After a little bit of organization and planning, then, you know, we've got to go find people. I'm assuming because you're in this room and in this class and you've stuck with this for as long as you have uh, this quarter, that there's an interest in this room for people to get involved in these kind of things and doing them. Um, but we're going to need a whole lot more folks. And not everybody in here is going to be able to, or it's not going to be your gift like we talked about early on in the, in the quarter. And so uh, we're going to have to do some recruiting and get more people involved, which is one of the leadership's goals and all of our goals should be. And that is to get more people, more members at Northside involved at some level. And as you can begin to see, you get down to a lot of these tasks are pretty specific and also fairly straightforward. There are things that anybody can do. And so uh, that's the other thing I think it's important is that we convey that message that we try and give people enough detail about what we would need help doing so that they can say, I can do that, and they can respond to it. But we've got to figure out how to do that. What else do we need? I think there's an overarching piece to this, and I don't know where it fits. And it's a research piece, and it's essentially don't reinvent the wheel. Somebody needs to figure out, as, you know, with the with the and, um, sheriff's department stuff, it's pretty straightforward. Yes, the sheriff's department does that. With a lot of the rest of this, is who's done it before somewhere else? Or um, I, I remember, you know, working for a county in California, and they were going to do something, and they weren't even checking out to see other people that had done the same thing, say in another state, another county down the street. And so they wasted a whole lot of time organizing and processing when someone, you know, I happened to be one of the people that had the other information and I said, do you want to know how we did this? Over? No, we don't want to hear what's happened over there. <laughs> you know, this, this is the, the, the particular, the specific statement was this is in Arizona, this is California. Uh, well, we are talking about providing mental health services. Yeah, that's, that's kind of. That goes across the yeah, world. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, just somebody, <clears throat> and it could be the point person kind of doing that or finding someone that says, Oh yeah, we did that when I lived in Colorado. 
And uh, again, that evaluation piece, we did that one in Colorado. We found out that this one thing didn't work. You, you guys might think it'll work, but it certainly didn't work in Colorado. Yeah. Um, but that's, and they don't know where it fits in there. Well, that's probably one of the things that needs to happen early on. Yes. This is also something that when you look at the other things that were, are on our list is also going to come up because, well, for instance, an example that came up and, and you know, some of y'all have talked about that in here, the touch a truck uh, event. We know over near our house in Stone Oak that there's a Lutheran church right on Stone Oak Parkway that has put that on. I drove by it one day when they were doing it. It would be logical for us to go over there and talk to them and say, who did you talk to at all of these agencies that provided their vehicles, uh, these cool vehicles that the kids wanted to love and uh, you know, love coming and, and, and crawling around in and looking at to, uh, to do this? Because we're not going to be competing with them. I mean, they, I don't know that they've done it more than once. But there's also an organization that has copyrighted that name, Touch-A-Truck. Um, and, I, you know, we can communicate with them and find out, well, how do we go about doing this? So, uh, to your point, that's kind of one of the other things with uh, recruiting volunteers. What other kind of things would we need to be doing? Does Northside have a security team already in place? Of what kind? Some type of security. I mean, I know you have two police officers that are standing out here, but does this church itself have a group that monitors or? We do. We have a safety ministry, and so there's a number wouldn't of people. That be, wouldn't that be a team? Because I'm thinking where I was before, they actually had a team that monitored cameras and stuff, but they, they had a thing in place that if there was an active shooter, these are the exits. They kind of knew what to do. It was never communicated really to the congregation. So that, to me, that would be something. You don't just have somebody come in and talk about what to do for an active shooter. You've got to coordinate with whoever your security personnel is at the church if you're going to teach how to evacuate this building. To give you a little what background, after the Sutherland Springs event, uh, we formed a safety ministry. Um, our son is a lieutenant of the fire department and he's the chairman of it and I serve on it and we have uh, two police officers that are members here that do and we realized all of the things that we were saying. We didn't have any kind of policies or procedures and so we've established a lot of that stuff, put it down in writing and memorialized it and had it. And so that's one of the, this, is, this, this event is one of the big things that's on the top of the list for the safety ministry to put on but it coordinates, and that's one thing that the local outreach ministry does, which is work with all the other ministries here at Northside to promote and reach out to the local community that ministry's efforts, such as uh, Vacation Bible School and, and the fall event uh, for Trunk or Treat with the children's ministry. Local and outreach is involved. Some things would apply across the board. Right. Yes. But then, like I say, some things would be a little more specific. You know, for like here, which would, yes. So, to answer your question, we haven't done a lot of that already. Uh, I know, like, one of the things was like, and this would be interesting, I have no kids, but I know that if they were an active shooter, probably my first instinct would be go get my kid. And that's one of the things they say, don't do, right. you know, type thing. And so, just instructions like that, which would kind of go across the board, that could then be made specific. Yes, and, and that was one of the things that we worked with the children's ministry on that, on how to do that. And to your point, we also uh, got the information from the FBI, and, and we did a lot of those kind of things, where we gathered information initially in order to develop our own policies and procedures for how we were going to do things here. So that <clears throat> that's the same thing. In fact, all of these under safety are things that we've talked about on the safety ministry, about putting events on like this and doing where local outreach comes in is we want to do that to serve our community in our, in our area and help to begin to make Northside's campus a community center known in the neighborhood. Um, so what else are we missing here? I was thinking about under-recruiting that we need uh, 
to get a broader base. I mean, we can put flyers up around the building and everything like that, but I think we need a public service announcement or uh, something like that. That somebody in would get up in front of the congregation and say, "We're planning on doing this, and we need your help. You know, if you'd like to become involved, please contact the leader, the lead person." Okay. And that's really, a, that again is something that would apply to almost any of our events as we get more people involved, then we begin to build a group of volunteers who are used to doing it for maybe all of the events that we would be putting on. David? You know, I think whatever we're talking about, whether we're talking about something like this or some other type of activity, you're going to have to have somebody that has a real passion to be able to do uh, this particular thing. Uh, our tendency, I think, is to say, well, uh, we'll let Tina do this. Well, Tina's got enough uh, on her plate, as do all the ministers in this church. So uh, the ministers can help with coordination, uh, but this has to be grassroots, has to be ground up. Uh, it, it, it has to be something that people are passionate about, uh, whatever the event is. So uh, if you don't get buy-in from a significant number of people, then nothing happens. Right. Well. Um, I'm the lead ministry leader for the local outreach ministry, but you can see very quickly, I can't do all that stuff. So I've got the passion to see that these things get done, but I don't have the ability, obviously, and no one individual does. And whether I would want to be the lead of one of these events or not is also doubtful because there's a whole long list of them that we need to be working on and focusing on. And so that's the other part of recruiting is getting people to involve more people involved in our local outreach ministry at some level, and then identifying people who would really, really be interested in taking on, as David has described, a particular event that they might plan and do uh, each year, or a recorder, or something like that. And so that's going to be finding that uh, leader is going to be one of the most important things. On this line about communication and passion and everything, um, why can't we utilize the screen before before church starts and 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 do some videos with these announcement things going on and you know, with these people that have the passion to talk about it and just run these little clips every Sunday before church, before church actually starts. It doesn't have to be really loud, but um, with some verbiage so that if there's a bunch of talking going on, they can actually see what's being said on there and okay. make it, it interesting, and, you know. Tell, tell what it is, their experience, their whatever. And obviously, we coordinate with John Hodges on that, on the timing and the scheduling and stuff like that. And we'd have to get them down to very short times. Jim, before you, Linda had her hand up at the same time Jolene did. Uh, I was thinking about after we get the people in the building that it might be good to have a little table where we have flyers to hand out that say, you know, uh, this is what we have coming up in the future. Once we get dates for the rest of this stuff, we get get it on the calendar. You know, if you enjoy this, we're also going to have touch a truck or market days or whatever it is that we're have on the schedule so that we can pick up people that way that might enjoy coming back to the building to for some of the other activities. Thank you. Uh, Jim, go ahead. I think we need to think about having a prayer component that uh, deals with uh, success and the touch of the community for the outreach. Kind of the starting point, isn't it, Jim? Well, it, it, it will garner uh, 
connectivity, and I think it helps the volunteerism, uh, but, but it keeps us focused on why we're doing this from a high level perspective. Right, and, and every other effort that comes out. Exactly. Um, and that's something that could be incorporated here too, an encouragement for people to be praying specifically about something, um, whatever you know, project we're working on. <clears throat> so, what on here would be specific just to that event that we started with? Lead person, committee, calendar coordinator, working with Bear County Sheriff's Department. That's kind of that's kind of one right here. Huh? Um, identifying the tasks and actions that are necessary, doing a promotion, uh, the posters and promoting the event internal in the building. Uh, that kind of ties with this pre-service videos that Jolene talked about. Is there anything else on here that would be specific just to that one event? And when you think about what Linda mentioned, uh, I put, for better, lack of a better descriptive term, to fit on the board, uh, like an information booth or table about what we do, what we're trying to do to serve the community. But that's something that when you think about the market day, the, the food truck day, uh, a uh, foster family, foster and adoptive family act, uh, day, recreation day, any of those events that we're putting on here at the campus, we could be doing that kind of a thing for all of them. Uh, for the, the event we've discussed of, of using anything that we're doing to have Northside be a venue for an outside group to meet. Um, Rebecca talked about the having it be for the caseworkers that are handling the, the adoptive uh, or the foster caseworkers that are investigating caseworkers having a meeting. They don't have a big enough place for all 41 of them. Well, when we're having them here, we could have a host or hostess uh, or a group of people come in uh, at the beginning and at the end to welcome them and make sure they're feeling uh, comfortable here and then having something there that just, you know, is right there beside the entrance where, <clears throat> where, where they've got the opportunity to find out more about what, who we are and what we stand for and what our values are about supporting the community and trying to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Uh, around us. Yes, sir. One of the things that's not on that list that you just touched on is staffing. Some kind of staffing update. Got a whole bunch of people coming in and take this class. So, what are you going to do? Just walk in the door and kind of find their way around? It's not necessarily someone to tell them what, what the church is about, but someone to say, oh, yeah, we've got you guys going over here. Here's, you know, pencil, paper, here's your materials, you know. A welcome desk that's just specifically related, and that would work with all of these. It's like um, in, with the um, social worker thing. Um, somebody there to say, "Oh yeah," because they're going to do food. Here's your food. You know, we'll have food at noon. You know, meetings in this location because this is not a large, a large building. But I remember, but I haven't been here that long. I've gotten lost in it trying to go to a meeting upstairs. Julie? He's right. Um, from, we're from Houston, um, Northwest Church of Christ, and it's, this building is based upon, or they're, they're built so similarly. But still, when you walk in that big hallway, you would see big stand up posters over there, and all lined up. And we had, like, like there was an eight foot area or ten foot area, and we had all these mission things going on. And they were on both sides. And that's how involved in so many different things. And every one of them, it was staffed by probably two people. So that you can walk through and you can talk to them about what this is going on, where do we do this? There's always somebody to tell you to ask. Where do I go? One thing we're working on in missions, uh, leading up to Mission Sunday, is to have banners that are going to, my understanding is they're going to hang from 
the railing of the atrium out here, a big long banner that's going to have these kind of things on it, which are, you know, here are the things that we're doing in the mission, uh, each of these mission areas that, that the missions ministry is involved in, and uh, here are the things you can do to get involved. That are, that are an expansion of our other uh, print pieces and stuff, which we gave out last year and we'll do again this year. And so that is heading in that direction, but not quite as uh, right down in front of your face. It's going to be more up, you know, and then we have to have people standing probably under each banner to be able to do that. And so that's an, an addition to it that I think could be uh, more beneficial. And then the other thing, Jolene, that that does is coordination with all of our other missions and ministries to have them have their people come and be there. You know, Coco could have some folks from the children's ministry come and, and be available to talk about what, you know, if you want to bring your kids, here's what we offer for children. You know, that's one of the biggest draws that we have frankly, because it serves a need that, that every parent has. Uh, well, we're, we're developing a, an outstanding list, Glenda. I'm just telling you you have five minutes. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> She keeps me out of trouble in so many ways. <laughs> um, anybody, anything else that we should add to this? It's fascinating, and I kind of expected this, uh, this awesome idea, that, that this would be the kind of thing, and we'd end up with a list, and very few of them would be for this particular event, and, and most of them would be things that would apply to almost any event we're going to put on. Jim? One more thing. Yes, sir. On promotion day, you would have to have a, a full staff of people, greeters, facilitators, uh, directions to the event, parking lot signage, uh, set up, clean up. So they would be the ones that uh, help facilitate movement of, of our visitors and our members into the event, out of the event, Etc. So we don't have people just wandering around knowing what to do next. Right. Thank you. I was about to write something along that line when it comes to signage based on, you know, this is how we, we, we take someone else's idea and, and it sparks one of our own and, and God gives us another inspiration that we need directional signage in the parking lot to get people into the right entrance. We need directional signage when they get in the building once we've got greeters at the door to welcome them. And you can see why, looking around this room and how many people we have, uh, when you come in about a particular day, we need to recruit lots more people to do this. So some of these ideas are fabulous, focused on what we need to do to promote all of this information to the, the congregation to be able to get and recruit other people uh, to come in and be a part of this. And a lot of this stuff is uh, uh, so simple that literally anybody can do it. And that's what's fascinating about it. Um, anything else before we close? We will record this and uh, then provide more feedback next week about this and then how it applies to other things and then we can talk about beginning to uh, start putting some plans into action and how we begin implementation. Anybody else? Let's have a prayer and we will be dismissed. Holy Father, thank you so much for the inspiration that you give us through your spirit and the, the wealth of ideas that uh, people bring with them to this class to participate and to share and to contribute to helping us accomplish your mission of taking Jesus to the world around us. So thank you for each person that's uh, part of this class and uh, the blessing that they have brought individually to the whole group. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
If you would, any of you that have written notes on those sheets, leave them on the table for me, please. 